This video is going to be about uh, mixing glazes. Uh, I make all my own glazes from uh, raw ingredients, have done for a few years now. Uh, but I did start with um, Mako and Amico glazes very briefly before getting into this. Um, there's an awful lot to say about glazes, um, but at the, the simplest level it's like following a very basic recipe. The more detailed stuff I got from Ceramic Materials Workshop, I'll link them below. If you want to learn about the why of chemistry, there, Matt has put together a really good systematic way of going from knowing that you get powders to why you use those particular, why the certain things are interchangeable and why they're not, where, where everything comes from and why you use it and so on. There's kind of a very sensible way to work through the process and I cannot recommend them highly enough if you want to get into glazing. Um, so if you want to learn about the chemistry, go there. Uh, I could attempt to cover it all, but it would, you know, it's not going to compare to that. But that being said, um, this is how I'm going to test. If you watched the video I posted, yesterday um, on test tiles I showed off a blue glaze that that's what I'm going to be playing with today. Um, I'm going to mix up two versions of it, a low silica and alumina version which will be more runny and more prone to crazing and then one with the same ratio of the two of them but more of them uh, which will be stiffer and less prone to running and crazing. Um, and Basically, again, this is where Ceramic Tutorials Workshop, there's a very easy way of adjusting recipes, but you need to understand what you're doing ideally before you do it. But I'll give you both recipes and you can kind of see why they are the way they are. Um, but this is my process for mixing up glazes, just doing a test at this stage. Um, and I'll explain a little bit as I go. Part of it is gonna be fast forward because when I've got the powders out in their powdered form, I'm going to be wearing a mask and not talking, so I'll just fast forward through that and you can kind of watch it in the background. But uh, a few things to say, I've got cheap scales, but they're the ones that go to 0.01 of a gram and they are accurate enough for my liking. I don't measure things out in such, well, generally don't. Sometimes if you're doing like 0.01, percent chrome uh, you really want better scales but there are ways around that so I do my tests in these plastic beakers um, they are perfect for it if you're in the UK you can get them from Wilco for a pound um, and I haven't found anything better because they've got uh, a really good seal so they literally they stay sealed nothing's evaporating from them and I've had tests that have sat there for years and you just shake them up and they're good to go and obviously they're very cheap. Um, the part of the downside to them being so cheap is that, as you can see, my mountain of them over there, um, and then it kind of goes further back as well, because I, I bought probably 50 at one point, and then I haven't, because I've got so many of them, I've not been so good at sorting, but that's fine. So that's what I'm mixing in. Then I combine all the powdered ingredients together in a pot before I add them to the water and I always add them to the water so I put the water in the container I put the powders in a pot and then stir the pot up um, again back to the mask do not breathe in any dust I've got an extractor van that I'm going to run after this I can vent the studio if you're going to do it indoors make sure it's somewhere where you can clear the air afterwards and you don't breathe it in while you're doing it you want a proper filter mask one of the I mean, ceramic suppliers sell them uh, one of the cheap paper masks. It will be better than nothing, but you really don't want to get silicosis, so don't breathe in any powders. Um, and the reason that I've mixed them up is because bentonite is used to keep uh, glazes in suspension, especially if they don't have much clay in the recipe, and that will clump. If you put it in, if you put a teaspoon of it into water, it will stay as a teaspoon-sized lump and it's a real pain to put through a sieve. If you mix it through the powdered ingredients, it doesn't do that. And so you'll save a whole lot of sieving time by mixing them dry. So that's what I'm going to do. 
and then um, what I'm going to do is I'm doing two two versions same ingredients different ratios I'll again put the recipes in the comments and I'll put them up on screen as I go um, but if you're doing that then the easiest way is to have both recipes side by side you've got to pay attention while you're doing this uh, and then just weigh out each ingredient but both things so for example the feldspar the first one's going to get 50 percent and i'm mixing up a 100 gram test 100 grams is a nice amount to test because obviously firstly it lines up with the percentages and secondly a scale like this is precise enough that you'll get a, a good measure as long as your colorants aren't in really low proportions you'll the you you'll have done it precisely enough for it to be representative of what it would be as a big batch if you try to, to mix up 10 grams at once the error in the scales would mean that your glaze might not quite be right for how you're going to do it but then i'll show you in a minute how you can apply once you've got them mixed up in larger amounts you can apply uh, something like 10 grams to a tile more precisely and get a good measure from that but yeah so 100 grams i'm going to do 100 grams of water you can that's personal preference but um it makes things more convenient it w will make them a bit run some glazes will be a bit runny with 100 grams of water but um most glazes that's a pretty good amount for pouring and dipping so first thing to do is get your water and a nice thing with having two glazes mixed up from the same amount with the same amount of water is you know that if you want to do a lime blend of them, which is the other thing I'm going to show in a minute, um, because obviously these are two, this is the same glaze but with two different uh, variations, you can have either end and then you can step between them to see what it looks like at each point between them. And you'll get a, a smooth gradient between them. Uh, if you put the same amount of water in both of them, you know all you've got to do is put the same weight. So five grams of that, five grams of that, you know that's half and half you're halfway between the two of them if you don't measure the water then you don't know that and it becomes impossible to tell so that's everything i think i need to say before starting so i am now going to put my mask on and just rattle through these Right, I've let them sit for a little while. Um, the longer you can leave them to soak in the water, the more uh, the ingredients will kind of have soaked and dispersed, so it will make this next stage a bit easier. So in a way, it will be good if you prepared them the day before and let them sit overnight. Although I don't think it makes that much difference. Some ingredients are worse than others in terms of um, clumping. This has got strontium in. I don't know if this is universal, but my strontium always clumps, so it always has to be sifted quite well. Um, and leaving it overnight will improve that, but it won't solve it. So leave them for a little bit if you can, but um, give them a good shake. And then this is an 80 mesh. Yeah, pretty sure it's 80. So it's an 80 mesh lawn sieve. Happens to fit very well on these, which I think are from IKEA, but might also be from Wilco. They don't say, as far as I can tell. They're a nesting set, and they were what I was using for the other one. Very useful to have a range of pots. And that also applies for glazing as well, because if you had a small, like, shot glass size thing, you can dip it in 100ml of glaze. Whereas if you have a wider pot, you'd need kind of like uh, a litre's worth to dip in. So. For small tests, it's worth having a range of pot sizes, but, and actually I probably will dip some of my little tumblers to test these glazes out, so I might well demonstrate that in a minute. Anyway, um, I use these 
knackered old brushes, the sieves have a tendency to give the brushes a haircut because the hair, the the um, bristles go through the sieve and then it just pulls them off. So eventually, if you use a brush that looks like a brush when it starts, you'll end up like that. But um, they still work fine. They put stuff through the sieve. So you can see there that um, maybe you can see there. The, the lumps, that's the strontium that hasn't mixed in. So these really need to go through twice to deal with that. But it's always worth sieving glazes because it won't matter quite so much. If you buy a pre-made glaze mix, then there's a reasonable <laughs> So, knack old brush. Yeah, if you get a pre-made glaze mix as a powder and it clumps, then the clumps are probably an even distribution of the glaze. So you've got a bit of everything in there and it's not ideal, but actually um, probably all that happens is the glaze application goes on a bit thick where there's a clump. Now that is not true at all if you've made your own glazes because obviously each one of those clumps is pure strontium, which means that the rest of the glaze does not have as much flux in it as it should, and those spots are excessively flux. Um, so neither part of the glaze will behave the way it should if it's got clumps and it's one you mixed yourself. You don't necessarily need to do it as many times as that, but um, each time it, it leaves some lumps in the pot, so it's worth doing. So that is mix number one, and then because they're so similar, I can't be bothered to wash the sieve out, it's barely got anything on it, you're going to contaminate this one by a fraction of a percent so I just don't. If you're doing completely different glaze recipes or ones with different colorings then it's probably worth going and washing things between uses. But, um, for two very similar glazes the variation that this is going to cause is not great enough to notice. Right, so what you need for this stage, got an underglaze pencil to write what they are on them. And then these are, incidentally, all baby related, because uh, I've got a 15 month old, and actually it turns out that a lot of baby stuff's quite useful. These are little Sterifeed uh, 50 mil tubs, which I don't know, if you can find something similar, fine. But um, I don't know, you can buy them on Amazon I don't know what else would do. Um, but the really nice thing about these is that they are the perfect size to dip a test tile in. So without a huge, because if you dip the test tile in that mix or when it's in there, it would dip the top inch. But with these, you can fill them up most of the way. And actually, just just going to do something else first. Something to bear in mind with copper, in particular, all the base colorants, is it's quite dense and has a tendency to fall out of suspension. So, if you're not careful, you'll end up with copper sat on the bottom and the rest of the glaze won't have enough in it. That one seems to be doing all right, um, but it's on the runnier side, so you've got to be aware of that. So what I'll do is I'll pull that in there in a second so I can dip straight away. Um, weigh the test tile before you apply it. Right, what it is, this is going to be the low end. 
because uh, I'm only doing these test tiles, I'm not going to put anything more informative than just where it is on the on the scale. If you're doing a lot of different test tiles, you need to actually write a bit more information, but I'll sharpie it on. It's much easier to write in sharpie than it is in underglaze pencil. So you've weighed your test tile. I'm going to do a four second dip which on a test tile of this thickness should be about four grams. And that's why you weigh it. I actually think that looks a bit thin. So that's going to be, let's see, yeah, three grams. And the reason you want to weigh your test tiles, 4.2, perfect, is firstly um, you want an equal application across all of them so you know that the differences you're seeing are in the glaze, not in the thickness. And the easiest way to do that is by knowing how much glaze is on each test tile. And the easiest way to do that is by weighing it. Because you know how much water it is in it, that's actually 2 grams or 2.1 grams of glaze powder on there. And you know that without having to do anything complicated. Just because it's 100 grams of water, 100 grams, or just over 100 grams of glaze mix. So that is fine. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to... These three are probably the most similar. So I will do the same, fortunately. All the other ones of these I have still have uh, tests inside. I need to wash this one before I can work in. So this test art is a fraction thinner than that one, so I will be aiming for a slightly lower weight on it but it doesn't have to be precise but what you want is um, a decent way to compare across test tiles so knowing how much is on each test tile and also knowing across tests so I generally aim for test tiles of this size for about three to four grams which means the application is thick enough that you'll start to get the glaze flowing and beading at the bottom, which you'll see if you look at any of the pictures of test tiles I post. Um, and to be honest, if you're doing test tiles and you're not getting that bead across the bottom, unless you intentionally have done it that way, and it's something like a clear glaze, you don't want it to go on too thick, you're probably missing out on what would make the glaze interesting, because most glazes get disproportionately more interesting as they get thicker. Just because you get phase separation, you get um, movement in the glaze, they combine. Most of the glazes I use look really boring when they're too thin. And a lot of people test them and go, well, the glazes didn't work for me. And you look at the test tile and you can see it was like half a second dip. The glaze is nowhere near thick enough to get any of the things that make the glaze interesting, like movement and phase separation and so on. So yeah, weigh your test tiles. Three, two, very quick down. Hopefully this will be more like three and a half. 3.8, yeah, 3.8. So I reckon that is a similar thickness to that one. And so we've got our two end points. Then all you've got to do is I would go for a mix of 10 grams uh, for an application of four because you will leave some on the brush. So this one's going to be the um, three quarters low one quarter high so you want to go seven and a half and two and a half and I'm not 
that angle about this. So that's a fraction over, but um, the general ratio is going to be right. This one's going to be 5 and 5 for half. I've actually gone a bit over, so this one's now going to be 11 grams to balance it. and this one will be two and a half and seven and a half and again a bit over so So you now know they're in the correct proportions. The actual amount on each of them doesn't matter because you're going to weigh it onto the tile. So this tile is three quarters low. And it's very hard without weighing to get a good sense of how a brushed test compares to a dipped test because they go on so differently. That's 3.6, so we're basically there. This test tile's a bit fatter than either of the previous ones, so we want to go a bit over. 4.6, that'll do. So, set that aside. Next one is half. can't see how well mixed they are in these when it's the same colour but it's worth being a bit more thorough because if you ever do two that are different colours you'll see that it doesn't mix perfectly immediately you've got to you do have to stir for a little bit so check, yeah, it's zeroed And that's that. Right, here are the fired results. Uh, low to high uh, silica and alumina. And as you can see, when comparing to the previous test tile, the colour is right, but the thickness of this application is too low, which gives me a good standard going forwards, but does mean that I can't tell from these exactly how much difference it makes with the high. Um, I think it will work well. You can sort of see in the amount of beading on top um, there is more movement in the, the lower end. But yeah, the, the glaze gets really interesting where it's at its thickest and none of these have quite reached that point. So I'm going to run another set of tests in the next kiln with half again as much glaze on them. And this is where weighing them is quite useful in that I know exactly how much was on that test tile so I can do half again as much or double and it would just be six or eight grams of glaze application rather than the four. Um, so not completely compelling. I don't have an answer as to what the best silica and alumina level is yet but I think the original is probably going to be the most interesting. So what I'll do, uh, I'll give you the recipes with this video for either end and do an update when I've got the next set of fired results. If I have a definitive answer, if not, I'll keep working on it until I do and then I'll post something else uh, at some point in the future. But that's it for now.